In order to edit an event type, all you need to do is click on the white box with the event name inside of it, or the gear icon, and then click edit. In this case, I'm going to edit this 30 minute meeting that I have, so I can show off some of the settings that can be adjusted within Calendly. To get this meeting ready to share, all I need to do is really touch these first two buttons. What event is this? And when can people book this event? I'll briefly cover the additional options at the very end, but let's start with what event is this. When I click on that, I have the option to edit this screen. I can change the name, location, description, link, and color. In this case, I'll change the name to chat with Sophia, and I'll make the location my Zoom link that I've already integrated. We have a video on video conferencing integrations that you can watch to get details on how to set this up. I'll also type a little description and then change the event link to correspond with my event name just to avoid any confusion. When you're changing the event link, make sure to use dashes instead of spaces because we're actually editing the URL here. And I'm feeling fun today, so I'm gonna make the event color. Eh, we'll leave it, you know what, red. We'll keep it red, why not? Now I'll just click save and close. All right, next, when can people book this event? When I click on this, this is where I can adjust when people can actually select dates and what hours I am available. You can change the date range to be multiple calendar or business days into the future. Business days only includes Monday through Friday. You can also choose a specific date range or just indefinitely into the future. In this case, I like this calendar days into the future option, but I'm gonna change it to be 90 calendar days so that when people come to the page, they'll see days three months out. The duration, we will leave at 30 minutes and I want to use a different schedule. So by default, it's going to use my default hours, which I've adjusted. You can watch this adjustment happen in the availability video that we have on our help center. You can also set custom hours if you don't want to use one of your existing schedules, but I have an existing schedule called weekend time. So when I click that, it will apply that schedule to this event. Adding buffers before or after an event in this case sounds like a great idea. This will give me time to prepare for my next meeting and block off that time in my booking page so that way people won't book back to back. And I'll give myself a 15 minute buffer. There are some extra availability rules down here in this drop down menu, including start time increments, unique scheduling conditions, secret events, and time zone display. For time zone display, if you're doing an event in person, you can actually lock the time zone down to be where the event is going to take place, but I'm gonna leave it so that it automatically detects the time zone that my invitee is in. Secret events are great if you want to create a private meeting link that you only wanna share with one person, and that way it doesn't show up on your main scheduling page. But I want as many people to talk to me as possible, so I'm gonna leave this option blank. And we will click save and close. Now that those two sections are ready to go, I can start sharing this link immediately. There are also some additional options that I'll cover briefly now. Invitee questions are great for gathering more detail about your invitee before the meeting. There's a video on our help center that goes into more detail on this. Workflows are great for sending automated messages after or before a meeting. So if you wanna say a reconfirmation text and then after the meeting, send them a follow-up email with a smiley face or something like that, you can set that up to automatically happen through the workflows tab. Notifications and cancellation policy. This is where you can adjust what type of invitation you're sending to your invitee. Most people use calendar invitations because this will automatically create an invite and an event on your invitee's calendar. Um, but this only works if you're using Google, Microsoft Office 365, or Exchange calendars. If you're using an Apple iCloud calendar, you'll want to switch this to email confirmations. But in this case, I'm gonna leave it as calendar confirmations. You can also create a fun little cancellation policy if you want, but remember Calendly does not enforce cancellation policy. So if you have something in here about some sort of late fee or no-show fee, that's not something Calendly can enforce. And you'll have to reach out to your invitee directly about that. We also have the option to collect payments. Um, in this case, if I had a Stripe or PayPal integration, I can set that up here. But since I don't have one of those, I'm just gonna click save and close. I don't need to charge people for having time with me to have coffee. All right. 
Now this event is ready to go. I can start sharing the link immediately.